Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. Today we are really excited to introduce you to the new FT Easy Pack version 2. Now the reason that we're really excited to share this video with you is because if you've built our FT Easy planes in the past or you're getting ready to start your very first one, this Easy Pack is new and improved, but also it has a couple key changes that you may want to be able to know about before you start your first build. In this video, we're going to cover the functions of the new radio. We're going to talk about the new, more powerful motors and the props. And we're also going to show you how to mount the motors and the motor mounts, which are slightly different than the very original ones. Make sure you watch this video to learn about these differences before you go on to build any of our easy designs. If you guys don't know what the easy power pack system is, it's basically a two channel system that works off of motors that gives you the ability to have full proportional control and fly your airplane. First thing you're going to notice is a brand new transmitter. This transmitter has better resolution and better range than the previous one. And it is also cross compatible. So whether you have the old transmitter or the new transmitter, don't worry, they're all going to work together. To go up and down, you simply change your throttle higher or lower. And to turn left and right, you simply use your right stick to steer almost like an RC car. Next, we have our 350 milliamp battery. We have our two motors now swinging a 52 millimeter prop each. One thing to point out here is that you'll notice that the motor mounts are different. The red motor mount goes to the left side. The blue motor mount goes to the right side. You're going to notice on a red motor mount, the pre-installed prop is labeled B. Whenever you have to replace your prop because maybe you broke it or you bent it, make sure that you install the B prop on the red motor mount. And likewise on the blue motor mount, which goes on the right side, that prop is going to be labeled A. To change your props, you no longer need a prop puller. To remove it, all you simply need to do is pinch the prop on both sides, rotate it down, and it'll pop off with friction. To replace your prop, simply line up your prop, and with nice even pressure, press it back on. Whenever you're replacing your propellers, make sure that the rounded dome area faces outwards. That's going to be the proper pusher configuration. You're going to notice that there's a couple little flanges on these motors. Because of that, this will help actually cut into the trailing edge and kind of key into it to be able to hold that motor so it doesn't shift easily. One thing to always make sure is when you mount your motors, make sure you mount the motors in the slot. If you have a tapered trailing edge, make sure you don't move the motor left or right, but you mount it perpendicular to the thrust line. Just like our original Easy Power Packs, we have our classic USB charger. This is going to charge your batteries in about 30 minutes. So if you want to keep on flying, make sure you stock up on extra batteries that will be available in the store. And finally, we have our brand new control board. We actually had this designed specifically to be able to handle a higher amp draw to couple with the higher powered motors. What makes this truly special is not only will you be able to fly all the original planes with even less power but more performance, you may notice now on these newer models that you're cruising with less throttle to maintain altitude and you can climb much more aggressively. When it comes to mounting the electronics, everything is going to mount the exact same. Now we got a tremendous amount of feedback from our teachers and educators and a lot of our community as well on the fact that they really enjoy swapping electronics from one plane to another. These can be glued into your airframe if you want to keep them permanently or you just want to peel the glue later on. But you can also simply use tape to be able to tape them on temporarily. Just make sure when you do so that you check it before and after every crash. You're going to notice that our transmitter looks dramatically different. Instead of our rates modes and our light modes being on the bottom, we've actually moved our rates and our lights on the very top. Our very top right button is going to give you rates mode, and our very top left button is going to give you the ability to turn on and off your optional lights. So we talked about all of our electronics. Let's go ahead and install this on so you can see if there's any differences that you may see in the different build videos, you know how to address them here. First off, you're going to see that we have our red motor mount. These are still going to mount on the very bottom, just like we did in the original videos, and they're going to hook in on the very back trailing edge, just like that. And then we're going to go on our blue one. Now, these motors are a little bit longer than the other ones. If you find yourself having one of the very original kits that were accounting for the shorter motors, you can cut a little bit of a relief out of the foam to let it sit in all the way against the trailing edge. The nice thing about these new motor mounts is that little hook that hooks on both sides is fantastic for gripping to the trailing edge, but also if you have any of the wooden motor mounts, it's made specifically to grip around the 332 plywood that we have. And whenever you're taping these down, just like before, you want to pull this 180 degrees around. You want to start on one side, go all the way around to the other side. Now, in some of our build videos, because the wire length is needed for every last little millimeter, we may recommend that you make your connections first before putting the motor mount. Make sure that you don't neglect that step and that you follow along with those instructions. Pull that right around there. And that is nice and solid. Let's go and pass our main connector for the right motor through the whole entire fuselage. And now we're also going to pass that right through to our control board. 
Anytime we mount our control board, make sure you mount it on the left side with your battery lead pointing up towards the nose. Now you're gonna notice that we have a red connector and a white connector. The colors of both these connectors are gonna match. So we're gonna take our white connector and we're gonna plug it into our white socket here. And then we can take our red connector and we can plug it into the red socket. You're gonna notice that the red connector is a little red dot on the top of it. Make sure that you take your time and make sure that your pins line up because you don't wanna misalign those and bend your pins. Here's a really cool tip that was actually given to me from a lot of our educators. If you don't wanna to have to worry about gluing down your control board and breaking it loose and damaging your fuselage, you can just simply use a simple zip tie, pass it right on through and zip tie your control board in. Just make sure you do so in a way that holds the control board nice and vertical and not horizontal. Now that we have all of our connections made, it's really easy to take a couple extra pieces of tape and dress up our wires. Now in our build videos, we talk about the importance of center of gravity. Anytime we're working with center of gravity, no matter whether it's the old power pack or the new one, it's still gonna be the exact same. Now because these motors are a little bit bigger, our and our battery's a little bit bigger, it should pretty much match out. But if you have a little bit more hot glue in the tail or in the front, you're gonna need to move your battery forward or backward to get it to properly balance. All of our easy designs in the build video are referencing either marks or a reference area, like maybe the back area of a, of a doubler to find your proper center of gravity. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our battery and we're gonna install it. We're gonna get a proper center of gravity. And at that point, we're gonna be able to turn it on and make sure everything works properly. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this all the way up in the front here and we can move this forward or backwards to get the proper center of gravity. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it up in the front here. I'm gonna lay this right on and you can see I'm just a little bit nose heavy. So I'll just rock this back. And there it is. Now that I have my proper center of gravity, I can make my connection. There we go. And to bind up our transmitter, which we're gonna do every single time, we're gonna turn our battery on. And with our throttle fully closed, we're gonna press the center button one time. You're gonna notice that your main control board light slows its flashing. Now we're gonna go full throttle and close throttle, just like we did on the original one. Now when we give this throttle, The gyros are working good and we have plenty of power. A matter of fact, we have a lot of power. This plane is gonna climb much better than it did before and we're also gonna have the same amount of flight time. Now, as we were talking before, this does have different features here. You can put optional lights and you can also have your rates mode. Oftentimes when we're going out to fly, I recommend going in high rates. The way we're gonna go in high rates is we're gonna go ahead and have our plane pre-bound, ready to fly. We're gonna touch this upper right hand button and at that point, you're gonna see this light flash. That means you're in high rates. Now, whenever I'm given throttle, high rates, and that's low rates. Your optional lights are gonna be in the two upper sockets that you see here. And you can see when I touch the optional lights button, I can turn on and off my little LED just simply by pressing this button. This is indicating that your optional lights are working. When you plug those lights in, it'll work great for you. Friends, we are so excited to finally be able to introduce to you the new version too. This whole STEM experience is fantastic, not only for in the classroom, in the homeschools, learning to fly, but also for summer camps. You can look in the near future for many more designs to be able to come out. I hope this gave you clarity on the changes, and we'll see you in the next video.